So the first thing we're going to do is um, look at using, um, like I said, pastel pencils and um, I can't believe it. I can't find my what am I suddenly can't find one of my pastel pencils now here we are um combining soft pastels um and pastel pencils so what I've got here is I've got a few soft pastels from my um new pastel school and new pastel school starter set um and I've got some pastel pencils let me just put that somewhere out of the way I've got um three um Faber-Castell Pitt pastel pencils. These are the ones that I, 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 I like. I've also got Conte pastel pencils as well. Um, but to me, um, these are a nice combination of um, having enough pigment in them, but also I can sharpen them quite well. Now, you, you have to understand when you're using a pastel pencil that um, any type of pastel product is made up of a, um, a pigment and a binder that holds it together. If you don't have a lot of binder in it, you get a really nice, soft, creamy pastel. But in order for it not to crumble away in the wooden casing, it needs to have more binder in it. So consequently, it won't, um, it won't be as, as soft. Um, but the whole point of this session today is to get you to use the materials in the way that um, they kind of want to be used. It's a bit difficult to explain what I mean, but anyway, I'll just show you. If I wanted to make a, um, if I wanted to make a very sharp, delicate mark, it's a lot easier to make it with a with a pastel pencil than it is to make it with an actual pastel. But if I wanted to make um, a kind of soft mark that filled in quite a lot of the paper, it's much easier for me to make that with a, with a soft pastel than it is with a pastel pencil. So what I'm going to do, hopefully, is combine the two of these to um, make it work. I've got a scalpel here because that is what I use. I'm going to make a mess now. This is what I use to sharpen my pencils. I'm going to stand up to do this. And um, I'll just show you very, very carefully. You do need to have them as sharp as you can. So what I do is, because it's quite difficult, I, I don't know whether you, many of you might have done this if you're using a craft knife, you might have kind of just kept sharpening away and away and away, like what, what happens when I'm cutting my fringe um, and you end up with nothing at all. But I kind of lock my thumbs together. I hold my scalpel or my knife in one hand, I hold my pastel in the other, and I use that one thumb to steady my other thumb. So then I can kind of, in a very controlled way, press harder on the wood and then be more gentle on the um, the, 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 the pastely bit. So if you've, if you've been struggling to sharpen pastel, pastel pencils or even pencils, try the kind of locking your hands together technique. Um, and remember the golden rule with any kind of pencil, I think, is um, it has to be sharp because otherwise it's pointless. Just bear that in mind. The reason we're using it is because we want it to be sharp. OK, so I'm just using a little um, a photograph of a, um, a little bit of a detail of some stonework for this. And I think I've put this one up on the um, for Lois to share with you. Um, and now, hopefully, you have to tell me whether this is perfectly in the um, in, in, in the right place. So this was one I did earlier, as they say. Um, I've just done um, the bare minimum to kind of just show you what, what I mean here, because I said this is kind of like an exercise to get you going. Um, I've got three pastel pencils, a white, a brown, a dark brown and a black. I'm starting out with the, the dark brown because I know the black one is slightly waxier and it's, it's harder to rub out. I've also got a rubber, just a pencil rubber, um, if things go wrong, and I've given myself a little guide to to save time. But just a word uh, of advice if you're doing things like archways um, or any kind of curve that you want to get in the right place. I had about four goes at this before I got it, I got it right, but I did it very gently to start with. And then when I'm trying to measure the next one off it, can you see how I've done it in dots? Can you actually see, is the light good enough for you to see? Yes, we can um, see. Th those little dots, right, okay. So now I've got, because it's much easier to rub out the dots if they're wrong than it would be to rub out a whole curved line. Um, so now I've done that, I'm just going to, yeah, I've just got my little, my little bit of um, my stone. I, I'm afraid if any of you are 
are or were architects, you're probably going to be cursing me by the end of it because I don't know any of the technical terms. To me, they're just brick stones and uh, there's a bit of mortar. So again, with my very gentle lines, I'm thinking of um, just things like getting my proportions right. I can see that there are actually, between here and here, there are about four stones. So I can divide it in half and in half again. And if I haven't quite got it right, I'm not stressing because the lovely thing about old buildings is that they're all really wiggly anyway. Um, so you don't really have to worry about it. And then when I've got, when I'm a bit more happy with the fact that I've got my lines in the right place, then I can just do a little bit more of kind of get, getting my, 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 draw, my drawing down. But I don't know whether you can see that what I'm doing is I'm not, doing lines that are really sharp. I'm, that is showing, isn't it? I'm, 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 I'm actually changing the quality of that line because what I'm trying to draw is really crumbly stone. So if you only take one thing, well, if you take two things away from today, if it's the fact that you need a sharp pencil and you need to vary the quality of your line, then I'll be very happy because it, it's so easy to get, well, it's not easy, but it, you can get so much character into something just by the quality of how you put that line down. And I don't know whether you're noticing, but if I, if I press harder down here, it starts to create a sense of a shadow. Um, I have gone to put a shadow in there. That was a bit of a quick, if I, if, I do, if I do the same thing down here, if I just press harder underneath the stone and on that side, you start to get a feeling that there's, there's something um, there's something shadowy going going on there. So that's my sort of basic bit of drawing. I'm going to try and speed up now because otherwise we won't even get beyond this one. And that would be a terrible shame. There's a little bit of a detail here. There's like a kind of shield and um, some kind of carved, well, it's like a coat of arms, isn't it? A crest carved. And rather than draw the whole thing, all I'm going to do here is look at the shadows. Bit of a shadow around there. And then there's a shadow, shadow under that bit there. So what I'm trying to do is hint rather than tell all the information. Um, partly because I haven't got time and partly because I think it makes a much more interesting um, piece of work. And also if you were out there sketching this, you wouldn't want to be sitting around for ages um, drawing every, every single line. Now, I'm gonna leave that for the moment and move on to my little bit of um, stonework and what I've got here forgot to mention is a couple of um, Conte crayons and I've also got some charcoal. Um, I do love a bit of charcoal but we'll, we'll be getting on to a bit more of that later. Now the reason I've got these Conte crayons rather than um, a soft pastel is I don't have these particular really rich colours in that, th these particular ready kind of um, colours in my pastel set and I always have like a a burnt sienna and a raw sienna um, Conte crayon on the go because they work really well with animal work, with portraits, and they're great with architecture. So I'm just sketching a little bit in. I'm looking at the stonework and seeing that it's kind of basically kind of um, angular. There's a lot of um, right angles in there, but I'm not drawing in every brick carefully. And I'm also letting my colors overlap because it's, it's a higgledy piggledy mess really. And I'm not gonna get, I, what I don't want to end up with some sort of um, kind of cartoony Disney type thing, um, much as I love Disney. I think they've got the most amazing artists, but I, I want this to be quite what we used to call in theater, lost and found. Um, so I'm going kind of gently, gently. I'm also using the, um, I'm slightly using the texture of the paper here because if I start to smudge these together, I'm going to end up with bricks that are, um, they look really smooth. And of course they're not smooth. They're really textured. Part of the weathering is all those little kind of um, pitted, pitted bits that have gone into them. So at that point, I'm now going to kind of see if I can pick out a few, um, pick out a few edges.
And I have got a, a kind of, there's a sense of the needing to be some horizontal lines in this and for them needing to be some vertical lines. Um, let me just have a look on the screen how that's, that, how that's showing. Um, but there's also some kind of, there's some corners that have been seriously cut off along the way, um, worn down. Um, and then I'm going to come in with a little bit of um, the, the, these walls have been, I think they've been repointed quite recently because the, the, the mortar is quite, um, there's quite a lot of it basically. Um, and it's quite bright and a sort of pale pink, um, or at least that's what it's showing up um, on, on, this, on this photo. And as I'm putting this on, I'm also doing kind of quite jiggly, quite jiggly marks, sort of like, Th this sort of thing, because as soon as I start to do anything that's straight and rigid, it just won't have the right um, character. Um, Someone and if, where the photo was taken, Rebecca. The photo was taken in Exeter. Um, it's in the Cathedral Close. Um, there's two doors that I think of as the magic doors, and I've put I've put photos of both of them up on the. Um, uh the um one drive thing um on a on a sunny day can you believe as well don't have many of those these days um little little diamond here um and now i need to just do a little bit more on my um the lighter and i'm using a white here it it, it, it is actually cream but i you know i just thought let's 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 keep this really let's keep that this really really simple there's quite a lot of um white or a lighter color in these particular stones so here i'm just using my pastel pencil to sort of hatch hatch a bit of light in a little bit catching here if i want to knock back what i've got is this color that's out of the set that's actually very close to the color of paper if i want to stop these being so kind of textured i can actually come over with with any opaque pastel what the opaque pastels is because i mean lighter pastel lighter pastels are more opaque because they have more white in them and what they do is they soften everything so i can just jiggle a little bit of that on there and it'll knock my it'll knock my stones back also just going to put a little bit on here which hardly shows up and you probably won't see that at all but it just gives it a little bit of um additional texture a little bit of depth um just give this a little bit of a there's a lot of little bits going on here i'm just keeping an eye on the time um i haven't got much time left on this one um on the front or the back of your castle me taunt oh yeah really good question um I'm so glad you said that. I kept meaning to say it and forgot. I'm on the smoother side. Um, and the whole question of which paper you use is really, really interesting because the slightest difference in the paper texture can, for me, really can throw me off. And I've, I've got one here that I did earlier. Ha <laughs> ha, there'll be a lot of that. Um, this is on a Murano paper. And I don't know whether you can see, but it's much more textured on the stones. And I don't know why, but there's something about Murano paper that doesn't just doesn't work very well for me. But with this one, I just couldn't seem to overcome the texture on the stones. But there's something about Canson paper that just makes it all a little a little bit easier. Um, so anyway, if I do, sorry, if I, sorry Rebecca, sorry? can I ask you something? Yeah, um, I'm struggling with doing the bricks. Can, is it possible just to to let me know how you did that quickly. Did you These start with the darkest colour and then work lighter? No, I, I, I just, um, can, you, can you see this bit? Is this is this in, in shot? I, I just did these sort of marks. Yeah. Because uh, again, I was going to do this again, again as well to, to doubly show. Um, I've just done a few marks like that really. It's very, um, I'm exploiting the fact that you can make a kind of rectangular mark with a pastel just by going like that. Yes. Um, I've done it in quite a varied way. And then I've come back and done the darks 
And then I've done the, oh, I haven't done any lights actually around them, but you can just add a little bit of, I see. Oh, thank you, you can just, you can add a little bit of light. So I'm, I'm gonna pause that one. And I'm just gonna show you a couple of other examples of doing that sort of thing. So this is a um, tiny, tiny, tiny little drawing of the same door. It's actually, it's only it's not much bigger than my hand and I have got tiny, tiny hands. Um, and you can see how with this one is on a darker paper, which, you know, isn't a good or a bad thing. It's just that I, for this sort of work, I tend to use a color that's in the, um, it's kind of in, in the stone anyway. So with this, it was more like the color of the wood. Um, it was very difficult just using pastels to do this because they were just too big and it just became very, very um, indistinct. So what I did was just come back in with a, um, um, a black pastel pencil and I just picked out some of the details. This is also on a very textured paper that came in a pad that I found an absolute nightmare to work on. It worked for this because there are lots of lines going that way. But if I'd been doing something at an angle, it wouldn't really have worked at all. But can you see, I don't know whether you could actually see what I was doing there, that just with a little bit of a sharp line here and there, you can pick out mm. a little bit more detail. Yeah. Hoping that makes sense. So what I'm saying is use your pastels for the stuff that's quite soft and smudgy, but then um, use something sharper if you want it to be sharper. I'm gonna zoom out a bit for this one. And this is also, I'm just gonna unwrap this. This is an example of how I, um, I protect my work. I just take a cover at each corner over it. And then if I want somebody to then have to look at it without that I can just take it off but because it's taped up here oh, I need to take my scarf off that's going to be a disaster when that swishes through something um so that film covering um will because it's still taped here rigidly it'll go back in the same place so if you look here I've done the same thing I've drawn this in this is the archway at lovely Verucola where we go um um on the Monday I think from the water mill but you can, can you see how I've um, I've done the same thing with these these bricks here, where I've drawn them out with a pastel pencil, and then I've just used a pastel to smudge an actual bit of bit of brick. Because with these, each one was a slightly different colour, so I could come along with a different colour pastel, um, and then I've come back in with my little darks and lights. And I am gonna go on more about these darks and lights um, in the next piece we're gonna do. But basically, having got my little bit of color on, I'm literally just looking for the shadows, looking for the shadows and looking for where the light hits it. Um, and I haven't done all of it because what I love about this is just that bit of the archway and the view you see before through it and I felt like I didn't need to completely finish the whole arch um, or do everything here. What was important to me was just this bit. It was the beautiful kind of texture of the stones and the slightly varying colors and then the light on the building and that little bit of blue sky that came through. So back to the whole point of this uh, today's session being make your life easy. That's another way to make your life easy okay, is to don't do everything. Just look at what you're gonna do and think about what is it about it that I really like, and then just do that. So having done that, I know that was a bit quick, but is it okay if I move on to the street scene now? <laughs> do it, do it. <laughs> I'm just saying Andre's just run off, so goodness knows what's gonna happen. Are there any more questions? I'm just gonna have a quick drink before I carry on. Any more questions? No, there don't seem to be any. I think everyone's keen for you to carry yes. on. Okay, right. I've got um, can I oh, just one question. One question. Oh, can I just ask, do you blend any of that or just leave it on the paper? I just blended very slightly, but not much. Thank you. There wasn't a great deal of blending. I know the last time I've I did a bit. I've got a question. Yeah. 
Yes. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. Um, was that, um, did you say that was a, a, a charcoal pencil or a, some sort of pastel pencil? That you, you... It, it's, it's a Faber Castell Pit pastel pencil. Okay. But you could have, you could probably have done it with a charcoal pastel at all. It's not absolutely essential. Um, that this is another thing that I wanted to get across today that things aren't totally totally essential you know everybody has a range of things and I'm trying to get people to combine the ranges that they have so moving on oh, to this one, one one more question someone was asking about the plastic cover that you used um, it's just it's just like cellophane it's just cellophane I buy it on the roll it's the sort of thing that um, florists use um you, I, if I haven't got cellophane, I cover my work just with a clean piece of paper. But the reason I use cellophane is because it helps because I can then take them and show them to people when I'm teaching. Um, but it means you can just cover your work and yet you can still look at it. So you can right. even, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna have it framed, you can take it to the framer and still look at it, it without it being vulnerable. So I think it's magical apart from, well, you can get one that's biodegradable now. Um, I don't think you can recycle it, but at least it biodegrades, so. Um, on to this, um, which is a street scene where everything is a little bit more, um, we've still got the crumbly stone and all of that kind of feel, but it's obviously a bit more complex because we're looking at the whole street and we've got some figures in it as well. And I'm just going to um, go through these quite quickly. This was the photograph I sent you, which you probably looked at and thought, oh, that's not very simple, which you would have been in your rights to. Um, this is just um, one I did from the same sort of day, the same place, where, as you can see, it's not purple at all, it's blue. So this is a good illustration, and you don't have to be using the exact colours um, that I'm using. And actually, there is more blue in the photo. I think I just was having a bit of a purple day when I was um, sorting this out. And just a word on how I work. I take lots of photos um, because... I think it's really important to get more than one angle on, on, a, on a scene and see it at different times of day. Um, and what I do when I'm, oh, I've lost my, I've lost my order. When I um, get excited and decide um, I want to, I, I think I might want to use a photo, I do this, which is a quick charcoal sketch, because what this picture is to me all about is the quality of the light. So it's about those lights and darks. And I really love charcoal as a medium because I can work very quickly with it. I can take it away. Um, as you can see, it's a very quick sketch. The people don't really look like people at all. But I was just trying to work out what it is that I liked. And it was this lovely light coming through here. Then I'll do a quick color. Then I did a quick color sketch. But what's interesting about this is that I call it a colour sketch, but all I've done is basically simplified this whole thing down into two colours. It's still black and white or cream. So that's a creamy pastel. This is still mostly charcoal. And then I've just used like a yellow ochre and a, and a, and a purpley lilac um, so that I've got warmth and I've got cool. And I think this is a great, this is why I wanted to do this one today, because it's a great exercise in simplifying your palette and just thinking of warms and cools. OK, so when I was talking about simplifying the drawing, um, what we've got here is perspective going on, which people can find a little bit scary sometimes. Um, again, the reason I chose this photo was because um, it's got what we call one point perspective. All of the lines that are going into the distance are all actually going to that one point where the big cross is. And on my photo, I've put a little white cross. Um, that's the only time I really draw on a photo is to put my, um, my vanishing point on. Now, they don't exactly go to that line. You have to simplify it a bit. Otherwise, because buildings are built at slightly different angles and the level might be different of the ground and all of that sort of thing. So I simplified it down to this, which may not look very simple, but um, I just thought it might help. And what I'm trying to do here is see that all the lines are going to this point. Um, I just wanted to make sure I had some nice strong verticals there and some nice flat horizontals, because I want the, the viewer looking at my painting to know that this is the flat ground, this is a building. Okay, hoping that makes sense. The other thing is this vanishing point is on a line, which um, 
I call the eye line, which I, I know, I, I, there's probably a loads of technical terms about this. That's basically, I'll, I'll try not to be very technical and go on about this for very long, but that is where, that is the level that I was holding the camera. That's my eye line. Um, and because I'm more or less average height, you'll notice that most of the other heads are on that same line as well. Even though their feet are in different places, if they're closer to me, their feet are lower down, the further away their feet are higher up, but the heads are all on the same level. And this is, this is like the reason I've kind of done this is because this is so important to get in your head if you are going out drawing street scenes. The only problem with it is, is if the ground is very uneven. So if you live in Devon, where it's very hilly, this doesn't really apply. It applies where the ground is flat. And um, I'm just going to start sketching it out. The only other thing I changed with this from the one that I put up earlier, and this is on the drawing that I, I didn't like the, 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 the people, um, these two people, I just thought they, they didn't have very beautiful legs, basically. So I found a couple of other people who um, I, were going to be much easier to draw. And I'm not going to go much into people and how to draw them today, because this is more about the, the buildings themselves. But it's much easier to um, have figures and to get a bit of movement if they only seem to have one leg. <laughs> I know this sounds strange, but um, I much prefer to draw someone and I actually think of them as just drawing a tadpole. So they have a head at the top and they have a kind of shape of a body, but they come down more or less to a point. But I will talk a bit more about that a bit later. So now let's just go on to um, the materials. So I could be doing this in two color pastels, but I'm actually gonna do it in some pan pastels, which I'll, I'll explain that when I, when I get onto them. I don't use pan pastels enormously, but they actually work quite well with this sort of work because you put them on quite lightly. What I really need to do though, is to use something, because I've drawn this out quite carefully but I'm sure those of you who've done street scenes know that as soon as you put the pastel on, you lose all your drawing and it all gets really frustrating. So what I want to show you is how I use a couple of pens to actually put a little bit of the structure in first so that when I put the pastel over it, it, um, it doesn't get lost, okay? Or my, my structure doesn't get lost. Um, I usually use quite a fine pen and work smaller, but I've gone bigger with this, um, obviously, to, so that you guys can see it better. And I'm also going to use a ruler, which is a very unusual thing, because those lines that I put in to the vanishing point, I don't want to lose them. OK, so what I'm going to do is actually um, I'm going to put them in with a bit of a, a bit of pen. And you're probably thinking, oh, goodness me, she's just going to have a lot of lines and it's going to look like a spider's web. And that might actually be the case. But the thing is, is that they do get, um, they do get covered up. And if they don't get covered up, then I'm not that bothered about it because really um, they're part of the structure of the piece, um, which... I think they, they kind of deserve to be there, if that makes sense. So I'm super quickly putting these in. This is the sort of the bottom of the building. And these are kind of, they, these aren't exactly where the stones are. I'm not drawing a checkerboard floor here. I'm literally drawing myself a bit of a grid to be able to, um, to go back to. I don't know whether you've seen, if anybody ever does it designs actual things on, if you've seen documentaries where they're designing things on computers and they have like a 3D net. Um, that's exactly what this is. It's almost like I'm drawing out my grid lines, but I'm drawing them in perspective. What pen are you using now, please, Rebecca? Oh, okay. I'm using a Faber-Castell Pit Artists pen. I've also got one here called a Uni Pen Fine Liner. I, I, I think basically, it's not that important. It, um, these are the what the Faber-Castell ones look like. But when I'm out, um, out and about, I actually just use an old biro that I've got in my handbag um, because um, if I'm not bothered about these lines showing, I'm not really bothered about the quality of the pen. And the good thing about a biro is that it's gonna actually gonna fade with time. So they will kind of start to disappear. It's not so good to use a biro if you're going to stick it in a frame. 
but then you can always have it framed with UV glass. Um, and I, like I said, normally I, I just put this in as the grid um, to give me a bit of structure, but I'm actually going to put more of the detail in in pen today just to make sure that it's kind of clear um, and I don't, I don't lose it. Because once I start putting pastel on, all of this is going to just go out the window. So this, this, when I said there's a good time for questions when what I'm doing is a little bit repetitive, this is one of them. <laughs> if anybody's got any more questions, because I've just got to put my inky bits on. And you can see that the, these, um, sorry, I'm interrupting before you even get a chance to, to, to say a question. My grid lines are put on with a ruler, but my lines that I actually am going to keep, like these, I'm drawing by hand because I don't really want kind of definite straight edges to be the, 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 the dominant lines, if that makes sense. I'm just going to put my, um, yeah, I'll stop talking, shall I, so you can ask, ask, ask some questions. Anybody's got any? I think some of them... I just didn't there. hear what you, what you drew it with, Rebecca. Did you use pencil oh. or charcoal? I drew it, I drew it, normally I do it with charcoal and I do it really, really roughly, but I did it with pastel pencil this time because I, I just wanted to make sure it was right. Um, okay. Because I didn't want you guys to be following something that was a bit wiggly. Um, because normally when I'm doing this, I'm not that fussed about um, things being super, um, I kind of judge by eye. So did you see, when I just drew my verticals, I measured from the side and then came in. I didn't kind of measure, oh, that's 20 centimetres, 20.1, 20.2. I just did a few coming in from the side. Okay, and then I've just got some um, windows to do. I'm just gonna quickly go around the people just so that I don't lose those either because I've spent a lot of time sketching those out and they weren't working and their arms were the wrong lengths and la di da di da. So I've just put those in really quickly. And again, I'm just thinking about that structure of the top bit of the body, head, bit of a tadpole. And I, I, I like to think of them as individual people as well. So this is the lady with the big fur collar and the bag. This is the cool dude walking along nonchalantly. This lady's got boots on, which I'm jealous about. <laughs> um, and this little group, if you're drawing groups of people, um, don't think about them. My, my how to make life easier with this is don't think of them as individuals, just think of them as an entire group and then have a look at where there's a few legs and a few heads. <laughs> I know that sounds a bit, <laughs> a little bit vague. Rebecca? Yeah? Um, the wall on the very extreme right. Yeah. The lines. Did you do them all from that X? Are you? I okay, I did all of these from the X, but this I didn't because it's actually ah. like a bit. It's like a bit no. of a roof. So that one isn't, but all all the others are. Yeah. And I'm I'm not I'm actually but the realizing are. that. Oh great. Okay, so if 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 the top one is not looking yep. right, it's because it's not obeying the same thing. Oh. Right. Okay, and then I'll just darken in some of the. I'm just thinking that these these are sort of some roofy bits. There's there's a kind of um, I'm I'm not going to go into too much detail with this because the more detail you go into, the more you're kind of um, asking to draw attention to something that might not be right. Um, but what I do think is really nice is when you have some windows. Um, and these windows, if you can see on the, 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 the photo, what you only tend to see is a vertical. You tend to see the shadow. Remember when we were looking for the shadows before on the, on the, um, the, 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 the brickwork. So I need to zoom in a bit on this, don't I? Can you see what I've done here? I've just pretty much just drawn a, um, a dark vertical and a little dark at the top and with this one as well 
it's just there's a shadow catching the top of it this is a, this is like a, a, a deep window and then the shadow down there there's a little bit of a balcony here and again the windows here I'm just doing a little bit of a vertical so I'm just looking at the shadow as it comes into the window. And that's probably all you need to show to tell somebody that that's a building that's got some windows in it. And as you go further down, you probably just need to do a couple of lines to indicate that there's, um, that there's a window there. A little bit of a balcony there but you see this grid I've got that I've put on where I've got my little bit of a balcony I can just follow my lines as they as they go down with the bottom of the windows here I can just use that grid following the lines um, as it goes down here there's a little bit of a roof here which has got a horrible bit of kind of um, uh, spikes to stop pigeons but I could turn that into something that's a little bit prettier so I'm just starting to build up a little bit of um, definition using my little grid. Now down here, or oh, let's just zoom out technically, um, down here to catch my little um, bit of detail on my paving slabs. Just do a little bit of a wiggly line again, like we did on the, um, if you were joining me, um, I did on the, the door earlier. Again, I don't need to do every, every line, but I can just use that bit of a grid I did to get some of the feeling of it going in. Bit of flat ground here. I'm, I'm, I'm treating that as a little bit of a curb area because I feel as though these their feet are higher and they need that needs to be made, made sense in some way. And then I've got my cobbles here, which again, I just want to do a little bit of, do you remember when we, um, I just picked out the one side, two sides of the stone in a sort of L shape. So I have a little bit of a, I have a little bit of a cobble and I'm just going to see a little bit of the um, the shadow on this side. And I think that's pretty much it then. I've got my, let's just put this, this little canopy in. And then as far as I'm concerned, I've got my structure in that I needed to have in. I've told us that this is flat ground. There's a little bit of detail here. Um, and then this is all gonna be hazy because it's where the light is. Right, and now I'm just gonna get onto my pastel super quickly. So, sorry, sorry, were you gonna say something? No. Um, yes, sorry, I, I did have a, a question only because I'm a complete novice. And, um, and my daughter <laughs> walked in, so I was going to say something. Um, do you, I, I, I am a novice. You have the point in the uh, distance and you, you put all the lines go to that point. Yeah. And that, do you do that in all um, kind of landscape or, town, you know, most? I just, I just pretty much do it in architectural pieces. But right. like I said, like I said, it only really works if the, um, the, the, the ground is flat. Okay. Um, and there's, there are more complicated versions of perspective as well if you have more than one point. But I can I can talk about that later if people are still a bit concerned about it. Um, so what I've got here is a cream, just a cream soft pastel, um, and I'm I'm putting in some of my um, some of my light coming through my sky. Now I know this was probably a blue sky on a sunny day, but I actually like the fact that my um, camera has kind of um, just turned it all a creamy white because it's sort of simplified it and it's given me an intensity. If I wanted it to be less, um, less intense, I'll come and put some of my purpley colour um, back over here. But the main thing I'm thinking about is the light is pouring through here. And now I've got, I've spent that time um, putting on my structure 
it means I can work very quickly with my light and create something that has um, hopefully something that's quite beautiful about it. So I'm pressing hard here because I want um, that to be very intense. And you can see I'm still coming down over these areas, um, but I'm, um, I'm pressing less hard because I'm going to go over that. Um, and I'm gonna just see, there's gonna be more light here. This is actually totally different to the normal way I demonstrate because normally I'm always telling people not to draw it out and color it in. And this is kind of, kind of what I'm doing today so that's kind of coming through there and it's showing through the showing through the people as well right and then i'm gonna now come in with my um can i should I start with my cooler one or my lighter one i think i'll um um go on, i've lost my um i'm gonna come in with a little bit of um a cooler one now um, because I want to get this this distance in. Now I could use pastel pencil. I mean a, a, a soft pastel, but I'm going to use this pan pastel just because um, I've bought these sponges. But for, if you don't know what a pan pastel is, it's it's a very um, crushed. It's it's like the powder of a pastel pressed really hard into like a little a bit like makeup things aren't they and you can apply them with sponges um i just bought these as cheap makeup sponges or they also sell them with sponges like this that actually are a lot better to use and you can get all sorts of applicators as well like this but i don't i really don't tend to use those i either use this um these little bits of sponges or they'll even go on with a bit of a tissue so you don't have to um you don't have to have spend they're not cheap because you actually have a lot of pastel in them and they last quite a long time but um the reason i'm liking using them today is because you can see they go on very very softly um and consequently i can get quite um quite soft gentle um marks with them and also i like the fact that this has got a um uh, like a flat end because it, it just makes it a little bit easier um, to, to, to manipulate but I could, I could have done it with I could have done it with the soft pastel but it would have just taken me a bit longer because you can see it goes on a bit heavier so then I need to just um, just soften into it a little bit um, so I've got I've got that one and I've also got this kind of yellow ochery one this is what happens when you drop them on the floor they they kind of shatter which is really annoying and this means I can just pop a bit of um, beautiful color that glow of the um, this is um, photographed Oxford that that lovely glow of the Oxford stone um, she's actually looking very very dark in this light and just waft a little bit over over here and also where the stone's coming closer to me I'm thinking that it's gonna it's gonna appear warmer And then because that's gone a little bit dark, I'm using my light, my light pastel that I did my sky with just to give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a lighter, lighter zhuzh. And I don't know whether you're seeing that as, as I put, as I put the actual pastel over the, um, over the ink, the, the ink's gradually dying back a little bit. Just going to put a little bit more um, of the softer colour over my people as well, my little group of people. Rebecca, do you use a blending tool for your pastels at all? No, I don't. I just use my fingers, and but you could you could say that this um, 
you could say that this um, sponge that I'm using today is, is, is a bit of a blending tool. Um, because where the sponge really comes in beautifully is, can you see now, when I want to put the shadows in, um, the shadows will follow perspective, but they're not going to this point because they're coming from the direction of the light. So I'm not worrying about the perspective with them because life's too complicated it is, as it is without that. Um, but I'm just going to, I am looking quite carefully at my reference here, at how it comes through these um, signs. But because it's very sort of light, the sponge, you get that feeling of the quality that, you know, it's, it's, just, a, it's just a trick of the light. Now, so what I've got is I've got quite a bright purple now, which I have to say is showing up a lot more purple than it was in my studio. Um, I want to get another layer of dark into it. So what I'm going to do is get a sticker, just get a stick of charcoal, which again is very soft. And just darken them down. And at the moment, I'm just treating them like one whole shape. But I can come back and work, work into them. So we've got our, our tadpole man at the back here. I've got this lady and even though I want them to be pretty much silhouetted, um, I'm also making my marks, you know, she's got a round, she's got a big bulky coat on and it's quite round. So I'm thinking about that with all the marks that I'm making. I have a question. Yeah about how you remember which pastels are which when you've taken the paper off them? <laughs> I don't know the answer to that one at the moment. Um, <laughs> I, 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 th I think you kind of get used to ones that you like. Okay. Um, let me think about that one because I'm concentrating too hard on this. Um, okay, so as I was saying, what I really, really like about this, I do love the figures but I also really like um, these signs and the light coming around the signs. So I'm just now going to use my charcoal, which is my darkest dark, to put these darks in. And this is, yeah, I'm using my blending tool here, my finger. And can you see now the difference it's made with that light, putting that dark against it? This whole thing is just a play on lights and darks, really. And I can, I can darken in a little bit of these windows. There's a little dark bit behind there, just darkening my um, street light again. Put a little, I've got, I've got a lighter, a, not a lighter, a smaller version of that cream um, to just uh, put a little bit of light in there. Um, and then I'm also going to use this to drag, drag a bit of light between the, um, between those shadows. So we just get more of a feeling. Now, I'm really not pressing very hard at all with this. This is very, very gentle. This is the bit now, having done all the difficult bit, um, all the perspective, drawn with people, gotten straight lines in. This is the bit that I actually really, really love um, because it's when you start to bring it alive, bring it to life. And as my dad used to say, give it a bit of magic. So one of the things I'm going to do to give it a bit of magic is to um, 
I don't know if you can see on the photo, there's, there's, there's some little bits of light catching around. Is there another, I don't know what it looks like on there, yeah, it's a little bit. The, the, the lights and the darks are looking different in here to how they were in my studio, so I'm just having to jiggle it about a bit. What I've got here is, um, I know you probably think it would be easier to use a pastel pencil to do this bit, but I've got a, um, a tiny little broken shard of pastel. Um, which makes it easier to get a bit of detail because pastel pencil, let's get a bit of pastel pencil, probably defy me and show up quite a lot actually. Someone's asking what colour the building on your right is, please. What colour it is? Well, at the moment it's just the paper, but oh. it's, um, I've, I've done this piece several times to, to practice it and to time myself. And I've done that building differently every time. Sometimes I've put it in as a dog because it should be shadowed like this. And sometimes I put it in as a warm colour to um, make it feel like it's closer to me. But actually what I really like is having left it blank because the paper, um, I just quite like the fact that if that's blank, we focus on this bit here, if that makes sense. It wasn't just as a cop out. Um, and I think that's, that's a really good point when you come to the whole question of how much you interpret the photograph. Because if you want to just copy the photograph exactly, then why don't you just blow up the photograph is my kind of thought. Um, I think the whole point is, is that you, you, if you're working from a photograph, you, you look at what you like about it and then you, you pick that out. Um, you don't have to do, you don't have to do everything. So I'm kind of leaving it. Also, because I haven't got so much time. So again, they, I'm, I'm just giving them a little bit of the light catching them. And this, this is a type of lighting that I absolutely, I absolutely love because it makes life simpler being able to kind of, you know, simplify it down to just a light, a dark, lights, darks and warms and cools. Um, But it, it, it's where the pastels themselves um, get really nice to use. So, you know, I, I, I don't feel what well, I suppose I could do this with ink. I just don't really know how to do it. But um, anyway, so yeah, get, giving them a little bit of a, a little bit of light catching them. And if you wanted to be a bit more experimental, you could actually put a little bit of the, 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 the warm in there as well. Um, okay, and last of all, I'm probably thinking, am I ever going to get away from this? Um, last of all, I want to just put a little bit more of my, get a little bit more of my structure in because um, I've done the kind of, um, let's just put a little bit more of this in actually. Um, I put my structure in to start with, and then I've put my light and my shades in. But if I want to get a little bit of structure back into it, a little bit of definition, which often happens because I don't know about you, but I just tend to kind of start to overwork things a bit. Um, but at this point, my pens won't want to work now because um, pen does not go over pastel um, unless you want to destroy your pens. Um, so what I've got, what I've now got is I could either use my um, my black pastel pencil, but what I find more fun is a little bit of a contour, a broken Conte crayon, a black Conte crayon. It has to be a black one because there's something about the black ones that, again, it's a little bit more more waxy or harder than the the other colours, and it gives you. Um, it, it gives you a sharper, it, it, it just gives you a sharper line. Um, and they don't kind of get blunt. Once you've snapped it, it doesn't, it doesn't get blunt very quickly. There's this little sort of awningy thing here, um, which I quite like. Um, if I've made it go a little bit too dark, I can just knock it back with a bit of pastel pencil if I want to. I wanted to just put a little bit of detail into the um, into the um, lamppost. I'm losing the ability to speak now. Um, if I wanted to put a little bit, I'm going to put a little bit more um, 
definition into my cobbles. So that was using um, charcoal just to make some lines going um, up and down. It's really unnerving having this silence. <laughs> um, but I can also put some little lighter Some little lighter twiddles in as well with the pastel that I, I used up here. You're doing great, Rebecca. <laughs> it's very kind of you. <laughs> you know, what it, you know what it's like. Normally, when I do demos at work at um, art groups, there's quite a lot of it's quite a lot of to and fro. But I can I can understand that Lois can't have everybody. <laughs> This is, All asking. this is Elizabeth Ford. I'm speaking from the United States, from Ohio. And I just Hello. want to say, I, hi, I've so enjoyed it. And I already learned a lot of valuable tips. So, Oh, well, that's very kind of you. <laughs> I wasn't asking for compliments. I was just... <laughs> so what, what paper, Rebecca, are you using? This is still that Canson Meton. And I think it's oyster, the colour. I thought it was hemp, but actually I got all the colours out because the problem is, is that when you order it and it comes, it doesn't have the colour label on it. Um, and what, what is this, did you say? It's Canson Me Ton paper. If you're a French speaker, then I'm apologies for the, <laughs> the pronunciation, but I think is it, is it spelled M-I, then space, then T-I-E-N-T-E-S. Canson Me Ton. Yeah. Um, it's just a paper and the, the, there are lots of different pastel papers, but this this kind of is the one that I keep coming back to. Um, and in fact, when I go away, I um, I make I because you, you when you buy it on I buy mine online from Jackson's. You you have to buy five sheets at a time, um, which seems a lot because this is only half a sheet. But I get it through it. At a, I get through it at a tremendous rate. So what I do is like when I go to Italy next year, I'll probably buy two or three colours of this cut it into this size or even smaller and then just um, clip it together into pads. So I often find that when I, when I buy a pastel pad, it's never quite the colors that I want. And I think it's much better to just kind of get, get the colors that I do like and, um, and stick it together. So I've pretty much finished what I'm gonna do today um, with, with this. What, all I was gonna say was there's things like little details and trees and you could put little buildings in at the back here. But if you do do that, then just keep bearing in mind the business about um, uh, the light catching things. This is all about the light. So if, I, if I've got this lovely light coming through here and there's a bit of a tree here, I want it to catch, this, catch the side of the tree. So I'm kind of creating a little bit of magic by, um, you know, looking, hinting at details, but not actually um, completely doing the details themselves. So could so, you yeah. have an effect with the velour? Um, I don't really use velour, so I couldn't say. I mean, those of you who know me know that I use Canson, not Canson, I use Colorfix Primer a lot. I use a much more textured surface than this. But the reason I haven't done this on a textured surface is because I'm using pen and the pens don't really like, the pens aren't gonna like going on a textured surface. It's, you, you, you're just gonna mess up the, you, you're gonna mess up the nib. Um, I have got another one I was just gonna show you here because some of the time I just work in, don't know whether you can see that, that's, some of the time I, I, I hardly work in pastel at all. I just do, again, this was a, this was a bit of Oxford. Um, this is just using um, a, a brown pen. It is an art pen again. Um, and I've just hinted at, hinted at the sky with a bit of pastel because it felt a bit empty. But I love the fact that with, you know, you can do this sort of very loose work and you just don't need to finish it off. Do you know what I mean? You can just, it, it's just like doodling really, isn't it? I think working in pen um, with just a tiny bit of pastel on. So um, I think I need to stop and... Uh, uh, I have a question. Um, you're using soft pastels and charcoal and pen. Um, would you use um, the oil pastels? Well, I, I personally wax? never use I personally never use oil pastels because I really don't know what to do with them. I never really have any success with them. Um, 
so I don't know how you would do this with oil pastels. Um, mm. I can't. I can't really help you there. That's okay. It's probably something that you could use to create some of your texture, but you'd have to put watercolor over the top of it. Or well, I, th I think what else, you yeah. the, the only thing I have seen somebody do with oil pastels that was really, really beautiful was they did skies with them, and they actually used white spirit or turpentine to um, to thin it out. So they kind of used a rag with yeah with white spirit. And, and they got a really beautiful, um, subtle effect with it. So you could probably do that, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't even dare to contemplate it, um, to be honest. Would you put pastel on the building on the right? This. This yeah. this building here. Um, yeah. I I, um, I don't know whether I've got any. I'll I'll show you what happens. What, um, the thing is that um, yeah, it does look a bit it does look a bit empty, doesn't it? Looking at it on your screen, um, as I said, I experimented with it a bit, and I I actually quite liked it when I put. I'm just looking at how it looks on the the, the big screen for you. Um, even though my kind of instinct is telling me that it should be dark because it's in it's in the shadow. But something happens if you if you put it in the dark. It, it it kind of felt like it made the whole the whole picture became. I haven't done that very beautifully either. It, it's okay having it dark up here because it's against it's against the it's against the sky, but it seemed to because it's such a kind of um, it's a it's a bit of a blobby building. Um, it's it. it there's, there's very little definition in it. it, it it's a very sort of rough stonework that's kind of had um, plaster work put over it. The more I tried to, can you see already, it, it, it feels as though it's, it's not got the beauty of it that it had when it was a bit more simple. So I'm just going to, what the advantage of using um, pan pastels and, and, and only putting your pastel on lightly is you can actually take it away, you can rub it out again. So I'm not sure how much of this you're seeing. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take that out again and just go back to having that, that kind of glow of the yellow ochre. Someone was asking about willow charcoal. Uh, yes, it's, it, 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 it is, it is, it's willow charcoal that I'm using. Oh, right, okay. Um, I'm a great fan of willow charcoal. Um, so yeah, I feel a bit better now. It's got a bit of a glow to it, um, and like I did with the other when we were doing um, the, the 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 building of the, the the door at the cathedral, I feel as though maybe this could just do with um, just a hint a hint of a few more um, uh, stones. But I did feel I, I found that whatever I did with it in all my practices, I never really liked it. Um, so I just thought, why am I why, why bother with it? If you look on my website, if you want to see more of this sort of work, um, there's a section in the original paintings um, called People and Places, um, and I've got I've got a few other pictures of looking at Exeter Cathedral, and I've got a wall on this side um, with a couple of those as well. And it's 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 a similar thing. I've done very little with it um, because it just it, I wanted this to be the focal point. Um, and the more I did here, the less that got kind of um, it it just kind of missed out. So that that's kind of uh, who, whoever it was that asked that question. I'm glad you did because I think it's this was my thought process behind not doing. Um, very much to it. And again, the beauty of this sort of work is that you can um, you can take it off and um, I mean working like this is that you can you can take it away and put it back again quite easily because I'm thinking on the screen these people look a bit dark. but just with a bit of a pastel pencil, I can just soften them back a bit. Uh, a question about um... Another question about the uh, pastels. I use unison. I've got given some unison pastels, yeah. but they've got given the big ones. It, yeah. Presumably, the little ones are actually, you know, because I've seen them, like yours are quite stubby and short. Do you? Okay. So wh when you mean a big one, do you mean that sort of size? Yeah. Or, or bigger? Okay, no, a full no. stick. 
yeah because mm. they do what they do a bigger size than this as well they do like giant ones yeah. um the reason mine are short and stubby is either because i've got them from my starter set which is only half sticks or i break them in half anyway this is a typical one that i've got that i've just broken this section off which i'm not sure whether that's that bit that i was working or whether it's on another picture so i very rarely use them as a whole stick anyway um, I take the label off and break them in half because I I work this size or, or twice this size normally and it's a good size for being able to use it on its side um, mm. as well as on its end. Yeah. Um, if, if you're going to do like massive pictures then I'd break the um, I take, take the paper off and I'd, I'd use it as a whole stick but you can break them into whatever size you want to. Great, um, thank you. And the other question is about the pan stick things, the pan pot. Yeah, do you pan think pastel. Do you just need a few, do you just want very few? You just want the colors that you normally use? Yeah, and, and again, I um, I mean, I was lucky enough to, for various reasons, have, have quite a few of them, but I tend to only really most of the time use this kind of raw sienna i've got a burnt sienna color which again is going back to this is like a basic these these colors are basic to my palette so i tend to have those two colors in a pan pastel and this one i found that i really like for this sort of atmospheric um shadow um but you can but yes you can buy them individually so you don't need very many at all. I can't remember how much they are. There's something like seven pounds each, which seems a lot, but they last a hell of a long time because I don't know whether you've noticed, I've hardly used any color on this, yeah. but you, you know, it, it, it is quite effective. Um, mm. So, but equally, if I'd been doing it with the, with the actual pastels, um, I wouldn't have used very much of those either because this sort of work is about the paper showing through. It's like a tint, isn't it? Rather than a, I think I started working like this because I got actually got quite jealous of watercolorists being able to just waft a wash over. Um, mm -hmm. And this is most of the color that you're seeing here is actually the color of the paper really, just apart from that bit there. Someone's so asking more... if you would um, crop the painting on the right. Here, yeah, I probably would crop a bit of it. Um, yeah, perhaps, I don't know. And what size paper do you normally use when you're working with pastels? I tend to work about, um, I have kind of three standard sizes really, about 40 by 50 centimetres, which is about which is about A2 size, um, 40 by 50 centimetres. And then I work on a bigger size that's about twice that. Um, yeah it's about 50 it's about 55 by 70 um uh which is sort of getting towards a1 or i kind of work i suppose a3 but a3 to me this is a bit of an in-between size because it's um it's a paper which has come as a different size this is getting on for a2 but it's not quite that big so i think with pastels you can't what i find can be difficult for people is when they come on a course um, or they come to Italy, say, and they'll just come with a little pad. And it is quite difficult to, to use pastels just on that size pad. However, this is why I'm trying to show you that you can use um, other things to make it a bit easier. Because going back to what we started with, that was quite small. It depends on the way you work, really. People, some people, if people are painters, they can be very loose and free with it. But um, yeah. Um, it doesn't work what so sort, well for me. What sort of honestly. rubber do you use? That was another question that's come up. Okay, so the, so the rubber, I've got a variety of different rubbers that I've picked up along the way, but they're 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 all just pencil rubbers, just like a um, a white pencil rubber. I did have a very nice Faber Castell one. Um, I've got a Derwent one there. So I just tend to buy rubbers, you know, even from just like a news agent. If there's a pencil rubber, I don't use a um, putty rubber because um, it, they just get full of dust and then you just got this revolting dust thing. Um, but uh, um, yeah, I, shall I just, just mention the business about the um, 
people very quickly i haven't i haven't done much about people here um if you are interested in more st things to do with pastels um and you haven't already got my book which i know a lot of people have um i do go i do don't do much about architecture in here but there's various different subject matters in here but i do i do do something um i do do more about about people um and there is also um a great book if you want to get better at drawing people which is not mine it's called um figure drawing without a model by ron tyner um and if you want to learn how to draw people who are walking down the road um this i know a lot of you have heard me already recommend this book you can really learn a lot from it but um but the next demo i'm going to do is going to be about people isn't it lois yes oh should we talk about that actually um, um, yes. We, then Rebecca's going to come back and do another session on December the 17th. Um, a, 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 a winter scene, a Christmassy winter scene. Um, yes, it's going to be yes, a, 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 a snowy scene with children building a snowman to put us in the mood. Um, there were a couple more questions. Somebody was asking how you uh, what rubber? You, oh no, not you've talked about that. Uh, is the colour of the paper light fast? Oh, that's a good question. I'm hoping it is. I'm assuming it is. Um, I haven't double double checked that. Um, I think if it does fade, it's not going to fade very much. But I have to confess, I ha I, I haven't double checked that. Um, another question: How do you clean the sticks? The pastel sticks. Yeah. I clean them with a bit of tissue like that, um, which I have to say you should do every time you've used them. Otherwise you go into, it gets very depressing when you end up with 47 boxes of pastels that all seem to be gray. Um, and it is a good idea to clean them as you go along as well. I know other people put them in dried um, ground rice and all sorts of things like that, but that doesn't really work for me. So, um, I just clean them on a bit of tissue like that. But as you put a pastel, if, 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 you, if you drag that over something, um, you then have the, the dirtiness on it again. So you have to take it off. Um, and what, can, you go, can you go over what sponges you use with the pan pastels as well? Okay, so, so you can buy, you, I think, to be honest, for this sort of work, you could use any old sponge or you could just use a bit of tissue or a bit of kitchen roll. Um, if you want to, I mean, if you take a look at Nell Watmore's work, she does amazing skies with pan pastels and she uses these, this is not meant to be this colour, they start out pink um, and very clean. Um, this is a, um, one of the pan pastel sponges that they actually sell um, and they also sell applicators so you can almost treat them like, um, you can almost put it on as though you've got a brush um, and be much more kind of... Um, careful with, with it i'm not being very careful with that but you can actually I, I mean i've seen people do animals with it with them that are absolutely um exquisite but i'm using i'm using these cheap makeup sponges from the pound shop <laughs> um i wouldn't be able to put as much on um with one of these as i could with the proper the official ones because these are these are kind of firmer but um for this sort of quick work these are fine, you get about 50 for a pound. <laughs> bargain. Yeah, bargain. <laughs> um, and they do, they, do, they do the job for me. But, you know, if you're going to do beautiful, beautiful animal work and people kind of do the whole thing with a pan pastel, it's just exquisite, then you probably, there's a whole range of these applicator things. Um, any um, other questions? Take care of your hands afterwards. Uh, it all washes off. Um, and it's a really good idea to use um, hand cream because, um, uh, yeah, it, it, it does dry your hands out a bit. As you can see, you don't end up with beautiful nails. Um, I was offered a free manicure from my hairdresser and I had to refuse it <laughs> because, <laughs> because I, couldn't, I couldn't let the girls see the, the state of my hands. <laughs> what a shame. <laughs> Yeah, well, the thing is, what usually happens is because I work on a textured surface, I actually wear them down diagonally all on one side. And that really does, that, that really is tragic. <laughs> but I've had a week of working on paper, so they've, they've grown back a bit. Now, can I ask what type of... Is 
Sorry, we lost that. Can you say it again? What what brand of pastas do you use? Okay, so I I use my my actual soft pastels that I use virtually all the time, and when I do the next demo. I'll be pretty much using those all the time, are Unison ones. Uh, Unison Colour is the company. Um, we do, at the New Pastel School, we do, we do a range of sets. This is the small starter set, but we, we, we have other sets as well. But if you, if you, if you look at Unison Colour, um, yeah, if you're, not, if you're not used to pastels, that, they're my preferred brand because they're made with beautiful natural pigments. Um, uh, but they have, for me, they have just the amount, the right amount of binder in them. Um, so they're, they're beautiful and creamy to use, but they don't get destroyed if you drop them on the floor. Um, they're not too crumbly. And, and how many colours would you say? Because my, my cheap ones that I've tried to get out, and they, they're really not very nice colours. Um, I got the purple out and it was horrible. How, how yeah, I think the, the problem is, is that it's not so much how many colours, it's that you get a good range of colours. Yeah. So the, I mean, I, like I said, I haven't used these very much at all today, but I'll be using these a lot more for the next one. Because you see there's 30 colours there, which um, isn't many for, for, for a pastel range. But it's, it's about having the range of lights and darks and brights and subtles. So you do, if you've only got cheap pastels, you get much, you just get what you pay for with pastels. A better quality one will give you much more beautiful colours and a much nicer experience. I know the people who know me have heard me say this about a gazillion times, but I don't think I can say it enough because it's really true. Um, quality really shows with a pastel. But you need those two colours you've got today, the sort of yellow... Pardon? I can't quite hear you. Oh, no, she's gone. Oh, has she? I was going to say she was very quiet. Is it, um, uh, you can't hear me. Oh, no. Don't worry. Type it in. Type it in. We'll, we'll read it for the chat. In and I couldn't. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry about the, that. The, the, the colours, in answer to your question, I think, the, it's, it's on the sheet that Lois sent you, the information sheet. I've put down the colours I had used. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if I was using pastel pencils, I mean, if I was using unison pastels, I think I might have put the colours and also I, I put the colours of the pan pastels. So you should be able to find that information on the in, uh, on the sheet, which going back to somebody's question earlier is, is not an easy thing to do with pastels because, of course, once the label's off, it's really difficult to tell which one it is. Um, the way I tend to be able to do that is that I've got a hand colour chart that unison do. Um, and I can actually, um, you know, that somebody has literally um, used every single pastel on a piece of paper and written down what the number is, um, so that you can go back and match the colours. There are tricks you can do. When, we, um, when people have this set, we give them a, a sheet for them to actually make their own kind of um, fill in themselves so they've got a colour reference for when they've run out. Or if you buy a set that's got labels on, like like this, what sensible people do is they take the label off and um, they'll put a bit of the colour on it and put it back in the box for reference. But of course, I'm obviously not one of those sensible people because the label's still on it and it's not in the box. Um, so, so the, 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 you know, there, the, there are different ways, but um, yeah, I think that the, the, the colour chart that Unison have got now is actually quite good, even the one that isn't the hand chart, the one that's printed. Um, yeah. Someone is asking about your credit card technique that you showed last time. Oh, yeah, that's just a piece of, um, yeah, I didn't really need that this time, but um, th it's just like a piece of laminated um, plastic that, say I wanted to, um, my tree wasn't really working here. Okay, well, I just wanted to say thank you very much for um, watching and if you've got any questions, any more questions about the materials, I'm still fiddling with this here. Any more questions about the materials, um, do get in touch. Um, or about this particular type of, um, of painting, do get in touch. And if you want to see more, um, you can get in touch with me. I think my um, email is on the thing that Mary sent out. And have a look at my website at um, the other type of work. I do like this as well, because it might help some of the things that I've gone through today. It might make more sense if you see it in other pictures as well. There's one I did of Trafalgar Square um, 
with people sitting on the steps um, that's very much in this colour palette um, with warms, warms and cools. So yeah, thank you very much for your patience and it's been absolutely fantastic to see so many of you.